to the right thing. Okay, so uh, let me just make sure it's recording. Yep, it's recording. Okay. And I have it so I can see the raised hand thing. So if you want to raise your, if you have questions, just click the raised hand button and I'll notice it probably. Um, so uh, this week we're going to talk about um, discrete distributions. Now discrete, like I said, discrete things are countable. Um, so you have to have an exact number. Um, like if I'm talking about coin flips or um, I can say, well, I'm, uh, out of 10 flips, I'm going to get, you know, what's the probability that I get five of them? Um, and I can work on that. Um, other things would be uh, if we have, um, you know, in Poisson distribution, we're going to talk about, well, the number of average number of things that happen is this. So if it's like um, size of a litter of cats and the average size is, you know, four, then what's the probability that we get two and what's the probability we can get 10 and those kinds of things uh, work out like that. Uh, the last one here we're going to talk about is uh, the here the um, yes okay the uh, probability distribution functions where in this case here the first one uh, we have a raffle where we're getting tickets and um, they cost us so much so we have a probability distribution function either we win or we lose and uh, if we win we get you know, tickets worth $150 less what we paid for the tickets and if we lose we just pay for the tickets it's kind of like Powerball or anything else you know any other kind of lottery you buy something uh, you buy a ticket for it you can win or lose and then there's levels of winning um, you know you could have a you know a second third and fourth place prize and you can then figure out what is your expected outcome. The expected outcome is just the mean, uh, the average that you would expect over a long period of time, because if this is once, um, you're either going to win or lose. But if you play it you know, 50 times, you know, and do it for 50 years, then we have to look and say, well, what, is, you know, what should we expect as our total outcome for this? And you know, we're going to lose it most of the time but every once in a while we're going to win and you know those winnings add up to a value so um, that's what we're interested in and so in this one here we have 100 tickets at five dollars a piece and we buy four of them so i'm going to you know click on this and i'm going to make a table And so I have losing and winning. So we have the X is the thing that's going to happen, the value of that piece. Hello. Probability of X occurring. And X times P of X. So the value times the probability of those things occurring. And we care about this only so we can add them up because when we add them up, we're going to get mu, which is the expected value. I'm going to put it in here. So we're going to add these two things up. That will give us the expected value of over time. Whereas, um, so in this case, I have four tickets at fifty at five dollars a piece. So I'm really losing five dollars. So I have negative twenty. And here I have 150 plus four times negative five. I have no idea why I put that, that in there. And so this is negative 20, so this is 130. 
So the value of winning is $130 because we have to take out our costs. You know, uh, when this book first came out in the first edition, this is why we had the versus in the second edition, they forgot to put in the take out the costs. So the answer was wrong all the time. And I had to, until they fixed it, I had to go in and, and talk about it and explain why it was wrong. Um, but so when we do this, we have the probability of this occurring. If we have 100 tickets and we buy four of them, we have a 4% chance of winning, or 4 out of 100. And losing is going to be the rest of it, because, the, again, these things have to add up to 1. So this is going to be 96 out of 100. Oh, I forgot to share my screen. Yeah. Uh, I'm just having issues with my webcam. Audio, sorry. Oh. I really want to say that because you're not seeing the screen. Oh, I think I'm on audio. I, I'm on mute, so let me yeah. fix that. Hi. Hi. I can see you now. Um, same here. Yeah, well, you were having problems last week. I forgot to share my screen. So all that stuff I was just doing over there, you weren't seeing. Uh, yeah. Let me fix that and <laughs> share. OK. And then can you hear me now? I can hear you. Oh, OK. I think last week it was just, yeah, I think last, or not last week, um, on Tuesday. I think you might have had it muted then. Because I was trying to get the mic to work. I couldn't figure it out. I uh, Yeah, I just noticed I had it muted. So. <laughs> It did very well, could have been that, and that uh, that's all it was. But my camera's working, so, you know. <laughs> and now I, shut I the think we down, got Turn it back screen. on. You know, I, that's how IT works. Turn it off, turn it back on. <laughs> okay. okay. So all this stuff that I just did, you didn't see because I didn't wasn't sharing my screen. Um, so the table, which is really nicely drawn, as you can see, because I'm using a mouse. Um, our x is the value of the thing happening. So losing is minus 20, and winning is 130, because in my case, in my problem, I have that the tickets are worth 150 bucks, a pair of tickets. And I'm buying four tickets at $5 a piece. So using that information, I built these parts of the uh, thing, of the table here. This part was the fact that I bought four tickets. So I have four tickets, four chances of winning out of 100, which means I have 96 chances out of 100 of losing. And um, I'm going to multiply these and come up with a value and see, well, if I did this over and over and over again, what should I expect as an outcome? 96 over 100. times negative 20, and that's negative 19.2. And then 4 out of 100 times 130 is equal to $5.20. And when I add these together, I get negative $14. So over infinite number of times, I should expect to lose $14 per time that I do this. So we can see that, you know, buying right these four raffle ticks isn't really a good deal um, financially. But, you know, it's, it is good, um, you know, for the whatever it is we're trying to help. Uh, yes, Salyu. Are you getting me? Uh, yeah, uh, yes, uh, uh, yeah, you had a, uh, you have your hand up. I was just assumed you had a question. Oh, I'm sorry. Like, I oh, okay. I want to know how I got out. Do you get the 96? Oh, okay. So looking at the original problem, if I buy four tickets, that means I have four winning tickets. 
but I have 96 losing chances of losing because there's 100 tickets in total. Okay, so most times we don't know how many tickets are being sold, um, but every once in a while they'll say, oh, we're only selling this many tickets. Like, um, we would go up to York Beach and there'd be a raffling off a car and there's like, we're selling 100 tickets, but the tickets are $500 a piece for a car. And you're like, oh, well, I mean, you know, that's not a bad deal. You know, you, you could win a, a Mustang or a, and they raffle off different cars every year. And you're like, oh, for $500, maybe I win. But, you know, I have a one in 100 chance of winning, which means I have a 99 in 100 chance of losing. Um, so you're, the odds are still against you. You know, the only way to guarantee that you win is to buy all of them. <laughs> you know, and yeah. then it's, you might as well just buy the car. Um, so you know, we have to look and say, well, gee, does it make sense for us? You know, we wouldn't buy all of these raffle tickets because it would cost us $500 for $150 worth of tickets. You know, I mean, if it was Celtics playoff tickets, it'd probably be worth it uh, because I think they're going for like, you know, $700 a piece. So it would make, you know, that would be fine. You know, all right, great. That's the face value of $150, but I'm getting $700 worth of tickets. You know, so I'm making money on the deal but most cases you're losing so you don't buy all of the tickets because it doesn't make any sense to do out of every dollar that you put in there but if you put in you know in slot machines you put in a hundred billion dollars a year you know they're making a billion dollars on the slot machine so they don't mind paying out 99 because they're, they're just running the electricity and, and getting a billion dollars off of that so it's, it's a worthwhile investment for them uh, to pay out as much as possible without going over because you know they're still making tons of money and in some they actually pay out more but they're getting it in other things so um, you know, there's a, they look at this as a cost analysis. It's kind of like when you go to the grocery store. Some things are, you know, on sale and cheaper than what they pay for, and some things are not. And they expect you to buy the, the cheap things and the expensive things at the same time, and it, you know, they'll be okay with that. So that's kind of what they do. But in these things here, we're probably going to lose, you know, in the long term, over and over and over again. And that's all this is showing you is that. Um, that's how this works. And these questions here are, well, what are we interested in? How much are we going to win? Winning isn't, you know, both of these are winnings. You know, here we win $130, here we win negative 20. So while it's a loss, technically, it's still a, that's the, those are the values that we have. So they're still actually called winnings in those cases, even though it's negative. Um, what are the random values? Well, those are the you know, wins and losses, how much we're going to uh, value. So both of those values there, those are the X's. And so it, it just builds, they want you to build a chart eventually right here, where we have our X values. We have our probabilities of those things occurring. We have the multiplying of those pieces together. And then the last one asks us, well, how much do we expect to win or lose? And here we have to look to see well what values can we take we only get these two values because those are the only things that can occur in a um, binomial distribution we have you know if we had a hundred tickets we have the chance of getting zero of them all the way up through 100 you know um, and so they're looking they're giving you values here but obviously we only have two values that can occur and like i said they used to have this would be negative 20 and 150 because they kept you know, messing up the fact that um, you were paying out for that. So it threw everything off all the way through. All right, um, number two is, this, is the same thing. Basically, they're just asking you to come up with the probabilities of these things occurring. There's no, you know, story to this. It's just, if I had these values, you know, 
these uh, with these probabilities, what would I be getting? And so we just have to figure out the missing value because again, they have to add up to a one. And these are just multiply these things across. And then the next last question is, here's what the, what's the missing one? I don't know why they bother putting it in there because they put it there. But the expected value is just add up these values and tell me what the average is. So the expected value and the average are interchangeable in these distribution functions. And so you'll see both of them listed uh, at times and um, you know they're both exactly the same. It's just um, because again, they're trying to avoid the word average, um, but it's the mean, the population mean. Uh, if we did it over and over again, it comes out to be you know, the mean of those things. Because what realistically we have these things here uh, times the probabilities of happening, and then we add them up, which is how we actually, and which is how we find mean. If this was 50-50, we go, oh, well, I just add those up and divide by two. But because it's not a 50-50 split or an even split, we each value has its own probability, and so we work on it that way. It's kind of like if we'd asked you to add up a uh, um, uh, Frequency table, I have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and I have, all right, uh, 10 of these, and 5 of those, and 15 of those, and 10 of these, and 20 of these, and that's 20, 40, 50, 60, and 40 of these, and I said, okay, we'll find the average. I could do this as a distribution table, or I could actually turn it, these into percentages, multiply them across, and then add them down, and that would give me the same thing. So that's what a frequency, you know, averaging a frequency table does. You know, but usually when we add things, we have the same amount of them, and so we just add them up and then divide by how many there are. But that's only when they're evenly distributed. If they're not evenly distributed, or we have a list of them, you know, it doesn't come out nicely i mean technically we'd have to add up these things here and divide by 100 because i think i did 10 20 40 yeah I made 100 so we could do that you know and go oh, i have 100 of these things and i'm going to divide by 100 or i can find the percentages of these things that have occurring and um i do my relative frequencies and then i multiply the value times the relative frequency which is the probability so it kind of goes all the way back to the stuff that happened in chapter two. It, it's, it, it brings the ideas back, but doesn't always talk about them. This one is the same thing <laughs> as this and the previous one, except again, we have more of them. We have more things happening. Um, so it's the same problems. You know, what are the X's? The X's are, in this case, since it's a video store, you can see how old this is. This is talk, this talks about renting video, actually renting DVDs. So um, we can know that this is, you know, not necessarily uh, this word problem was not written in this decade anyway, um, and probably not in the decade before, <laughs> because uh, you know when was the last time people rented videos really? Um, so you can see that the word problem is old and probably needs some updating. Um, but you know, here's the probability of them taking out DVDs. And so the X is just how many DVDs they took out. They ask about the missing one. So that's that. It makes sense. They need to fill in this problem because um, then they're, they're just adding them up. So we'll find the probability that they're getting at least four DVDs which means they're getting four or five DVDs. And so we can add those up. What's the probability that they rent at most two DVDs? Well, at most means two or less. So we add those up. We could also find, um, it's weird that they don't ask, but we could find how many on average DVDs do people rent? And it might, won't, won't come out to an even number. Uh, and that's okay. So uh, discrete distributions, probabilities, well, while we're talking about you know, discrete things that are countable, the averages don't have to be. It's kind of like um, the average family has two and a half kids. Obviously, there's not two and a half kids anywhere. 
Um, but you know, we look at large groups and we go, okay, well, this family has zero and zero, and this one has seven, and this one has one, and this one has four, and this one has two, this one has zero, and this one has nine, and this one has six, and this is three, and two, and two, and one, and two, and we add them all up and we find the probabilities of those things happening. And then we, you know, multiply and we come up with a value. And so um, it just works out that it doesn't have to be a whole number when we're done. So this here, while all of these are whole numbers, the average is 1.2. You know, if I were to do this, the average would come out to be, you know, whatever it comes out to probably, um, just looking quickly, probably in the one and a half, probably a little less than two, um, but closer to, you know, to two than one, you know, so maybe 1.6 maybe 1.7. I'm just having a quick guess, but that's where I'm looking to see where the probabilities probably are. And I could do the math out and find it. And I could use a quick chart. And 0.09. And this is equal to this times this. And I'm going to fill down and then I'm going to add them up. So I said it was about 1.7. Yeah, pretty good. One point seven eight. That was pretty close. So again, it's I figured it was less than two, but a lot more than one. So next time I'll know I'll guess one point eight. So that was pretty close. But that's all we're doing is we're just multiplying these across adding down, we find our, our averages. And then we can also find our um, uh, um, standard deviations, but they're not asking us for these, so we're not going to bother doing it, but it is moved to trash. OK. I'm just making sure I can hear people. And there's questions. All right. Um, this one here, again, is the. So we're talking. We're it's similar. We're now talking about binomial distributions. Mm -hmm. And so with a binomial distribution, um, the mean is the probability of success times the number of trials. Okay. Um, and so we have three things we have to look at when we're dealing with um, binomial distributions. I'm sure there's a quicker way to probably if I hit like a new page or something. Oh, clear all. That's better. All right. So with a binomial distribution, we have three things we care about. N. P and X. And these are, I put these in really wrong order. Um, I'll do it this way X, N, and P. This makes much more sense.
Okay. So X is the number of successes that we're interested in. Um, N is the number of attempts that we try, and P is the probability of success. We also have Q, which is the probability of failure. And that's equal to 1 minus P. Because again, this is binomial. Binomial means we have two options, success, failure. That's it. There is no gray in this. Um, so if I'm looking for flipping a coin, I have heads and tails, two options. If I'm looking at hair color, I have lots of hair colors. But realistically, I'm looking for brown, not brown. OK, so the, while there's many kinds of hair color or many kinds of eye color, I'm looking for the not. I have the, the thing and the not the thing. And that's it. So it doesn't matter what things I'm interested in. The opposite it is always failure. So if I'm looking at, um, you know, Toyotas, I have Toyotas and not Toyotas. You know, um, I could do, you know, uh, Japanese cars and not Japanese cars. I could do uh, people who have iPhones and people who don't have iPhones. I, you know, I could even break it down to a specific kind of iPhone. Like whatever it is, whatever that thing I'm interested in, that's success. Everything else is failure. Okay, there's no gray areas. You either did it or you didn't do it. There's, it's one or the other. There's no in betweens. So when I'm doing these, I have um, that we have a hockey team. And they win 0.3, the chance of them winning is 0.3736. And they said that's based on a 13 year history of 387 wins out of 1,036 games. And you're like, people are always like, well, what do I do with those numbers? The answer is nothing. <laughs> okay, those numbers are there to confuse you and to show you where that decimal came from. Okay, because if you divide 387 by 1,000, 36, you get 0.37355, blah, 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 blah. So it rounds to this. So this is their winning percentage. All right. It's kind of like if I said, well, you know, um, looking back, you know, the, uh, um, after a win, the Celtics are a, you know, one in three chance, have a one in three chance of winning the next game. You know, we're just looking at history. You know, all right, okay, well, all right, so there's a 33% chance of them winning on whatever the next day the game is, okay? But on losing, they have a 75% chance of winning the next game. Oh, okay, that, that tells me that information. So depending upon when they win or lose, we can look to see, well, what's the chance of them, you know, winning the playoffs? Um, so, but we're just looking at data, and this is just giving us numbers. And so that's where that percentage comes from. And then they say, well, they have 12 games in November, and they want to know how many should they expect to win. And to find that, we just multiply the N times the P. Okay, so uh, where X is going to be the number of games that they win in November. And you'll notice it doesn't come out to a whole number. Okay, they're not going to win four and a half games. They're going to win four games or five games, but they're, you know, in general, if they play 12 games during a month, they should expect to win four and a half of them. And that's all they did was they just multiplied these two numbers together. So this could have been any number here, and this could be any percent here, but they multiply them and find that. So that's the expected value of that, because um, over time, that's what they win, you know. So if we broke this out, it should still be in the same thing. So if I did 4.48 divided by 12. It's pretty close, you know, 0.373333, because, you know, it's not exact. And this is probably a rounded number. And, you know, because this is rounded two decimal places, I could get more precise and I'll get closer to this value. But you know, to three decimal places, it's still pretty close. 
Um, actually, the two decimal places, the three decimal places, it's off. But you know, it's it's pretty good. It, it's a good estimate um, of what they should have. But like I said, the more decimal places were accurate here, the more decimal places were going to be accurate there. This is another binomial. So now we actually start using it. Okay, and we're going to actually start using the calculator for this stuff. Um, so we have a fencing uh, center that where 65, 60 percent of the fencers use uh, the foil. Okay, that's the whippy sword that they have. They also have sabers and something else. I looked it up, and I don't know what it is because um, somebody asked. <laughs> so I was like, oh, let's find out. Uh, rapier. Those are the two things um, that they also have, and so they want to know how many people don't use the foil. So if this is using the foil, then not using the foil is actually the probability of success. So if this is the probability of failure. <laughs> I don't know why they did that, but why they use this, but you know, sometimes, yeah, I don't ask. Um, they're just weird things. Like it just makes it more confusing, and I guess that's the reason. So they surveyed 23 people. So 23 is my n. So if that's 60%, and that's 1 minus p, this has to be whatever's left. 40%. I talked to 23 people. And then we'll deal with x, because x can be anything from 0 all the way up to 23. And they want to know, well, what is x actually? And x is, they tell you right here, the number of people who are do not use the foil. So whatever one is that. So it has to be a number, not a percent. Um, but And here they have the different types of weapons. No, it's just. You're either how many either six people are using it or they're not using it. However, that works out. The values that they can hold are anything from zero all the way up to 23, because there are only 23 people. We could have none of them. We could have all of them. We're most likely going to have some numbers somewhere in the middle. Um, but you know that's how that that's what that is. So. And when we talk about Poisson distribution, it's going to start at zero and just go up to infinity because um, you know you could technically have an infinite number of things. It's not likely, but there's no ending. You know, so again, um, litters of kittens. Um, from 1 to 12, uh, the average is 4. OK, but while it says 1 to 12, we could technically have you know, 23 kittens. So let's see, what is the? Nineteen. So there you go. The largest number of kittens ever born was in 1970, and it was 19. I'm sure they haven't kept track of it since, but somebody, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I can't guarantee that, but we can see that while it goes anywhere from 1 to 12, 19 is not out of the question. So just how many, what is success that we're interested in? Um, we'll get to that. What they want here is this is just a way for you to remember the things that you're doing. Okay. You're going to write this down a lot. Uh, this x follows some distribution. Okay, and then the then the distribution has important information. So in this case here, in the binomial case, it has the uh, n, and it has the p. And they're going to be different things for different types of distribution. We're going to see all kinds of different things that they they use, um, but it just helps you um, remember what things you need. So it, like when you're doing word problems like this, it's good to write this stuff down. This here is just a way to make sure you have written it down somewhere. So notice I have my n and I have my p. And you know, OK, I know this is a binomial. So 
I'm going to put B, and it doesn't have to be a capital B. It could be a small B. Um, but those things have to be in there, and it's just it. Like I said, when we get to other pieces, you're going to see it happens over and over and over again. Um, right here, there's another one. Uh, that's why that one doesn't have it. That doesn't have it. What does this one follow? Again, it follows the binomial distribution. Uh, there are a lot of Poisson questions in this one, which is weird and not helpful because there's some of the tests I know. I'll do some more when we uh, get to them just because I'll show you how they work. Ah, here we are. Okay. So how many fences are expected to not use the main weapon? And again, they want you to do this the whole number, but we just do the multiplication, 23 times 0.4, I get 9.2. So we expect somewhere between nine and 10 of them as a, on average, closer to nine than to 10. So that's why they're round. And then what's the probability that 12 do not use the foil? OK, so now we actually have to do stuff. So we're going to use our calculator. Above this VARS button is the distribution button. So second VARS. This brings up all the distributions. So this here we're going to do in chapter 6, which is next week. <laughs> this normal and inverse normal, and then T. So those are next week. Chi-square is chapter 11. F is chapter 13. And then we have binomial and Poisson and geometric and no, they don't have hypergeometric. So we're only interested right now in binomial PDF, binomial CDF, Poisson PDF, and Poisson CDF. Now, what those mean are the PDF is when we're using a single value. And what it does is it looks at the probability of finding one thing in a group, so a specific value. CDF is cumulative. So it starts at 0 and go, adds up all the probabilities up until whatever number it is we tell it to. And that's the same thing for the Poisson. So PDF is a single point. And CDF is cumulative distribution. So when we're looking at those, um, we'll get you know the the things we want. The other cool thing is that if you when you um, if you're using the TI-84 or better, um, does anybody have a TI-83? Okay, so the this is important because if you have a TI-83, I have to show you how to use the TI-83. <laughs> Um, I can't, obviously can't show it to you, but I, show, I, I can show you what you have to type in. Um, nobody is saying they do, so I'm going to assume you don't. All right, well, that's good. So if I'm using a binomial distribution and I'm looking for exactly 12, okay, here it is. I'm going to use the PDF, binomial PDF, and I hit enter. So again, to get there. Second vars, and you scroll down till you get a binomial PDF. Hit enter, and it gives you um, a chart to fill in. If you don't have this chart, you have a TI-83, or a, and some TI-84s, older TI-84s also don't have the chart. What's going to happen is you're going to have to put in these values with a comma in between them. So. It's actually when it, where it says paste here, it's actually going to paste the thing in. And that's what you're going to have to do is you create it. But this does it for us. So the trials is 23. The probability of success was 0.4. Again, we took that from right here. And then 
the number of things that we're interested in is 12. Now, if I don't put in 12, I'll show you what happens. Um, it actually gives you all of the values from zero all the way up to 23, um, which is a lot. So um, I'm, I recommend not doing it, but it is kind of cool. But if I hit paste, this is what it gives you. And this is the thing that people who don't have the, TA, the, the table actually have to put in. They have to put in the N. It's a little late for Fall Guys to be coming. And nobody even plays it anymore. The probability. So the N, the sample, the size, the P, the probability, and the X, the number that we're doing. And then when you're done, hitting, and you have to put the commas in between. The comma is right here. And then you hit enter, and it gives you an answer. So there's a 0 0.0823. Let's round up for four decimal places. All right. But if I hadn't put in that answer, if I do second enter, it brings back the problem, which is kind of cool. And I'm going to just get rid of this. And I hit enter. And it gives me all of these. And notice the little arrow going this way. That's the probability of getting zero. And here's the probability of getting one. And here's the probability of getting two. Exactly two. And here's the probability of getting exactly three. And exactly four. And exactly five. And exactly six. And exactly seven. And exactly eight. And exactly nine. And exactly 10. And exactly 11. And exactly 12. And notice it went up and then started going down because uh, what happens is the, since the average that we're expecting is 9, that's 12, 11, 10, 9, and here's 8. So 8 was 0.15, 9 was 0.16, and 10 was 0.15. So it went up and then starts to go down. So the average will have the highest probability. So that's kind of a cool thing to see how that does. And it, the same thing actually happens with the cumulative one. If you did a cumulative CDF, it would actually accumulate all of those. And I'll, again, I'll show you when we get to what's that. Um, but it lists all of the possible answers. Uh, it doesn't do this with the Poisson because the Poisson has infinite number of answers, so we don't do that because uh, it would never stop printing them. Um, but the, Poisson, the binomial will give you all of the answers uh, for all the probabilities for every one of those things happening. Okay, and so here, um, would you be surprised if all 23 people did not use the weapon? Well, we can go all the way to the end and see what the probability of 25 is. Oh, sorry, 23. And we notice it starts to go down and continues to go down. We're at 2%. Now we're at 0%. <laughs> 0.2%. Oh, sorry, 0.3%, I guess. And then it starts putting numbers that are bigger than 1. Now, when it so that's pretty numbers bigger than one. It gives you this e to the negative, which means I have to exponential uh, exponential uh, notation, which means I have to move this decimal in that many places. So I have to move this four places. So it's 0 .000, 0 .0008, 09. This one is 1.7, but it's times 10 to the negative six. Uh, no, we get negative four. Again, I'm going to have three zeros in front of the number. I'm going to have four zeros in front of the number. I'm going to have six zeros in front of the number. Now I have 10 zeros in front of the number, which is the last one. So finding having all 23 people without a foil is a decimal point, nine zeros, and then another zero, three. Right. So um, it moves, oh, there's going to be a number bigger than that, right there. Uh, negative, so it's going to be nine zeros and a seven. So it's going to be this, 0 0.1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, that. Yeah. 
that's the number. That's really small. So the probability of this happening is minuscule. I mean, it's not zero, but it's very minuscule. And so, uh, yeah, it's less than 1%. It's less than 0.1%. It's, you know, if I move this two decimal places, it's 0.00000007%. Tenths, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands, millions, ten millions, hundred millions, seven hundred millionths of a percentage chance of that happening. So odds are really bad. Okay, and that's with you know forty percent chance. So we can see. Um, Flipping a coin 10 times in a row is not likely to occur. Flipping a coin ahead 10 times in a row is not likely to occur because it's and 20 times and 25 times is, you know, even smaller. So um, we have, that's why that happens. And so we can see those numbers with the calculator. And if we wanted to do, you know, write out, second so enter. That brings up the previous problem. So that's a nice thing. And then I can put in 23. And I get my answer right away. So I didn't have to scroll all the way across. But if I'd forgotten, I could do that. But this gives my number. And remember, I have to this e to the negative 10 means I have to move this that many places that way. A lot of people mess this up and see the 7 and go, oh, well, it's 7. Which is really, you know, if they're dealing with probability, it's 700%. And, you know, because probabilities have to be between 0 and 1. So you can't have a 700% chance of something happening. That means it always happens, even when you're not doing something. Like it, it's you know that there's no chance of it not happening, and it should happen seven times. So that makes no sense um, for every time you try it, which is amazing. Um, so this here again is a PDF. Um, so the number of years it takes to earn a bachelor of science degree, three, four, five, six, and seven. And so they put the probabilities in. And then I uh, just ask you, what do those mean? Which seems like a silly thing. Um, so again, here we have a binomial distribution. Oh, wait, no, we have, we're going to have a, a uh, um, PDF file. Uh, we have a game that has, you have 52 cards. And a coin, and they, they're going to tell you the coin is fair. Now, when they mean that, that means it's as equally likely to land on heads as it is tails. An unfair coin obviously has a difference of that. And um, there are unfair coins in the world that are just real coins. Like they have fake coins that are done that, but there are coins that are technically unfair. Um, the nickel is one of them. Um, it has a one in six thousand percent, the one in six thousand chance of landing on its side. Um, the edge. Uh, there are like there's a Europe and a, an Australian coin, which when you spin it lands on. It's heavier on one side, so it always falls. Almost always falls that way. It's like a 70% chance of falling, like heads down because the head is heavier, so it tends to fall that way. Um, and then there's another one I know that its tails is heavier, so it tends to land heads up. Um, but usually we deal with fair coins and just assume that they're fair. Um, so here's the things that can happen. We have a card that's fa a face card, and the coin is heads. You get six bucks. You have a face card, and the coin is tails. You get two bucks. You don't get a face card, and you lose. So it doesn't matter if it's heads or tails. Um, you lose two dollars. So we can make, a again, a... PDF of this. And in this case, we're going to have two things happen. So I want to put two probabilities in here. You know, the probability of x, or actually, I'm going to make it probability of coin, and 
the probability of face guard. And this is X still. So we have, we have three things that can occur. So we get six dollars. If it's a head and a face guard, we get two dollars. If it's a tail and a face guard, and we lose two dollars if it's not a face guard doesn't matter if it's heads or tails so the probability of this one here happening in this coin is going to be one because that's you know uh this is one out of two and this is one out of two because it's a fair coin there's a 50 percent chance of either of those things occurring and then we have to figure out how many face guards there are well there's in a 52 card deck there's jack queen and king in four suits. So there are 12 out of 52. And then there's 12 out of 52. And then there's 40 out of 52 that are not face cards. And again, we would just multiply these things across to find our values. So six times 0.5 times 12 over 52 gives me 0 0.6923. That's ugly too, huh? Six, nine, two, three. And then we have, I'm just going to bring this back, change this number to a two. Would have made smart if I put it at the end, but whatever. And I get 0 0.2308. And then one more, I have negative two times 40 divided by two. Not divided by two, but divided by 52. Yeah, negative 1.5 something. Five, three, eight, four. And then I add those up and I get my value, which is going to be about this. Let's see how close I came. Okay, point six nine two three plus point two three oh eight. Minus 1.5384, negative 0.6153. They tell me to round it to two decimal places. So, hey, I got it. Yay! But that's what we're doing. That's We expect to lose 61 cents every time we play this. Great. You know, yeah, we're going to win $6 every once in a while, and we're going to win $2 every once in a while, but most of the time we're going to lose $2. So because we lose $2 more often, over the long run, we're going to lose $0.62. Cents.
And yeah, so the expected value is just the average number of things you're going, the average payout you're going to have. So I'm going to lose 62 cents overall as I'm doing this. And should you play this? Um, no, <laughs> uh, because it's negative. I expect to lose. And you could play with the numbers. You know, you could say, okay, well, instead of if, if I added aces to this, if I had ace, king, queen, jack, then that would make this 16. And then that would make this, you know, 36. Maybe that throws in. And how does that affect it? Um, is it, you know, 10 cards? Because, you know, jack, queen, and king are all worth 10. And, you know, 10s are worth 10. So that could, you know, change it too. So we could we can play with this. And eventually it turns into our favor just upon... Um, what cards are used. It also turns into a favor depending upon how much is paid out. If this went up to 10, well, now I have a dollar 15 and 23 cents. So Minus 1.534. I'm losing 15 cents at a time. So if that went to $10, I'm still losing, but I'm losing a lot less overall. So it might not be, it's still not worth it in the long run, but my payouts are better. And again, I could, you know, add numbers to this. And so we would turn this into positive, but we don't want to do that. We want to, if we're the person making the game, we want to make sure we're winning most of the time. And so this sounds good, you know, but, um, you know, they're going to, they're going in the long run, we're going to win. And, you know, you could change these things to be um, $8 and $4 or something like that, you know, so it's still 12 bucks, but, you know, we're paying out more each time and but we're getting more back. You know, the $2 we're getting to put a $2 bet and we give them, you know, the money, well, you know, it looks good on paper. So those are the things you might want to look at, and, and you can just kind of play with those to see how they work, and everybody's going to get different numbers, so um, you can see how it works. Some of you may have a yes, because your thing was positive. This is the same thing. It's just you have a bunch of them, and they give you percentages, so you put the probabilities in, multiply, and then it asks you, well, which is the best? And what are the expected values? Add them all up. You know, which investment uh, is the safest? So the safest bet is going to be um, the one that has the least chance of losing money. So this has a you know 25% chance of losing money. This has a 40% chance of losing money. This is a 60% chance of losing money. This is far more safe. probably should put the word in that way you could you know figure it out which is the riskiest well again um it's the one that has the biggest chance of losing money <laughs> that's fairly risky so this is a 60 percent chance of losing money so that's why that's the riskiest and which one should you go into which one has the highest expected return well you look at these three things and which one has the biggest number the one that will that's the best return. So yeah, we'll still have a 40% chance of losing money, but in the long run, we expect to really make $600,000. So that's a better deal every year than um, the other two. And that's what we use it for. Um, we finally, yes. So this is the Poisson distribution. And this is a Poisson distribution because it's the number of things happen over time. Now, they may give it in one time increment, but uh, and then ask you about information about another time increment. Just want to see if anybody's asking us questions. Okay. And same four people here. All right. So 
in a Poisson distribution, they may tell you, all right, this has um, 5.4 phone calls per hour. All right. But if they'd said um, one phone call every 15 minutes, and then how much, how many phone calls would we expect to see in an hour? I think that's the next problem. Um, Sixty births per day, but they might ask you here how many births do they births do they have in an hour. So we have to break this thing up to fit this time. Okay, so they can talk about it in one way, uh, but then they ask for it in another way, um, and those are important to make sure that the, the numbers, the values you're dealing with, are in the same thing. So the number of things that happen per hour even though this says per day. So you just have to watch those things. So um, here we have the mean is 5.4. They want to know the standard deviation. Well, the, the uh, Poisson distribution is nice. Um, you'll know it's a Poisson distribution because there's no probabilities mentioned. So if there's, if there's a probability mentioned, it's either going to be um, a PDF, but they're going to give you a bunch of them or a uh, binomial where they give you, you know, success and failure. So um, as soon as you start seeing more than two, uh, it, you know it's uh, going to be a, um, a you know, it's going to be a PDF. And usually binomials only give you one. They usually only give you the probability of success or the parent, in the FOIL case, the probability of failure. Um, so that's how you can tell these apart. So the mean is this. The standard deviation is just the square root of the mean. So to find that, it's second x squared, 5.4. So that's all you have to do to find the standard deviation is just take the square root of the mean. Seems pretty easy. Um, what is the probability that they're going to get at most six? So when they say at most, they mean six or less. That tells me I have a um, CDF. So again, I'm going to go to VARS. And I'm going to go to Poisson CDF. And so here, this is lambda. This is just the mean. So 5.4. And then the x value. This So the mean, the lambda does not have to be a whole number. The x value does have to be a whole number. Okay, so we can't get, well, we expect to get five and a half, five point four fault calls per hour. We can only get whole calls per hour. All right. So here they're saying at most six. And hit paste. And so for those of you who have the older calculator, again, you're gonna have to put the lambda in, comma, the x that we're interested in and then hit enter, and it gives you your value. All right, remember I said this one won't give you the, um, I can't do it without it won't let me do that. I need to have two arguments in this case. Okay, so this has to have an x value. All right, um, And then the next one asks, find the probability that it receives six, which means exactly six. If they'd said, well, what's the probability that they get more than six? Okay, well, we can't find that on our calculator. We have to find six or less and then subtract from one. So the probability that it's zero through six is this. The probability that it's more than six is one minus that value. And to get answer, it's second negative. And so that's the probability that it has seven or more. Okay. If they'd wanted six or more, they said at least six. That means that it's you know zero to five. So we have to we can't don't include six when they say at least. Always include the number before that because um, that's the diff, that's the important thing to, to look at when we're dealing with discrete, is that um, we have to sometimes look at the things that are less than those values. 
um, and that'll come up every once in a while. So those are things to look at. I think the last problem has that. Yeah, at least four really means that it's um, zero through three that we have to look at. So because the average is 5.4, what does that mean? Well, that's the average that they're expecting to get. That's, that's what they usually expect. That's the largest probability. Um, we can't find it, but um, I can find 5. Oh, sorry, this is CDF. So if I did exactly this one, so PDF. So again, I'm going to do that second bars. PDF, 5.4, 6. So there's a 15% chance that it's 6. And when I had 5, it's 17.2. 15.55. So there is a probability that's higher than um, you know 17.28. Uh, it's 5.4, but I can't find 5.4. I can't put in 5.4. He okay, doesn't understand that. So this has to be a whole number. doesn't get it. So I have to have a whole number in there. So I can have either five or six, but I can't have the actual average. But that is the highest, 5.4 is the highest probability of uh, numbers that are in there. It's just that we can't actually calculate it. It's kind of a weird thing that they figured out. Um, and here they ask about more than eight. Well, like I said, we find more than 8 means 9 through whatever. So we find 0 to 8. And then we subtract that value from 1. This one is the same kind of thing. We have 60 births a day. What is the number per hour? That we have to find that the mean here is going to be in hours, the number per hour. So they would take the 60 births divided by 24, because remember there's 24 hours in a day. We get that. The standard deviation is just the square root of that. And then they ask us to graph what this is going to look like. And we know it's going to go start low and then go up, That where 2.5 is the highest thing. Well, we could actually look at um, a numbers on this, so we can second bars. We don't we are going to graph it, but 2.5 and I'm going to put in 0 to start with. I can see it's 0 0.8, 0 0.08, all right? Well, I can tell right away that this is wrong cuz 0.08 should be up here. So these two are close. And this one's wrong. So right now I already have two answers that I'm going to just throw out. Okay, with this graph. The next one, I'm going to look at to see what happens. Second entry. I'm going to change this to a 1. And I see that it's 20. Well, this is only just above, you know, 0.8. So this one's near 20. So that, that obviously is the right answer. Just by looking at two things, I was able to get rid of this. Um, I could... Um, graph these out individually and find those pieces. Uh, but a Poisson distribution usually follows this kind of a curve. It goes up and then goes down and keeps going on forever. So 
they'll keep going out now, 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 like that. It, it always has this kind of form. So what is the probability of B5? Well, again, we just do, because it's exactly 5, we do PDF. And we put in 5. And we get our value. If it was less than 5, or at most 5, um, then we're going to do CDF. And we, that adds them up. Or we could find 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 and add those up. And that would give us the value that we want. So either one of those things is going to work. It's just more time consuming if we do PDF for each one of these. But since we've already done some of them, you know, we could add them up and find the answers. More than five, well, we have at most five already. So more than five is just whatever's left. So it's one minus this number. Um, here they're just asking you to set it up. They're not asking you to do any math. <laughs> you know, just set up the distribution. All right, so, and they give you all, well, we know it's not going to be hyper, and we know it's not going to be geometric, so it's either going to be Poisson or binomial. So those are two good things. Um, then the next part is um, we look to see, what well, we have a 4% chance of something happening. Okay, so I have a success. I have tests. I have a number of people that are happening. That's how I know it's a binomial. I don't have to do anything with it. It's done. The next question asks us, well, what's the probability that at least four people have the flu? Again, it's the same thing. So binomial and Poisson, we have to find the less than, and then we can subtract and find the greater than. Um, so at least means, at least four means four or more. So this is, we can look up zero, one, two, and three. Okay, so we do a binomial distribution. CDF, where our trials are 25, our success rate is 0.04, and we're interested in 3. And we find it's 98.34. Well, we want more than that with the other side, so it's 1 minus that answer. Oops, and it helps to put the minus as opposed to the plus. And that's how they got that. Um, this one here, they're asking the same question. It's just multiple parts uh, of one question. They could have just done that, but they didn't. Uh, since, again, we have a 4% uh, success rate, we have 25 people. We want to find the average number of people who we expect. Expect means the average. So they have the word on average and expect. So this is our expected value. We just multiply those two things. And then the last one, again, is a... Um, uh, binomial distribution. So I'm going to leave this to you. Um, this one here, again, we have more than two. So remember, we have to find let you know two or less and then subtract it. And that's going to give us our answer. So um, and we want to know how many people are going to attend TET. So they give us that. So they're not asking how many people will not. You know, they're asking, this is the probability that they're going to go, and they're going to keep using that. So um, those things are the same as the problem way up here. Um, this one, <laughs> way up here is problem number six. So that's how all of those things work. I'm not going to go into more on those. Um, uh, generally, you, you had a question about um, other things. Were you able to get into WebAssign, finally? I believe you'd send me an email saying you, you couldn't get into web assigns. Can you now get into web assign? 
and somebody else did too. I know somebody else asked me for a um, uh, extension. I just have to look to see who it was in my email. Um, so Tara wanted one and Crystal wanted one. Crystal wanted one and somebody else did too. Um, Somebody's computer crashed. Is that? Yeah, so I, I hadn't while well, I said I would generally while well, I said I would give it to you, I hadn't actually logged. I was at my school. I was teaching when I sent that email. I hadn't logged in. It was the end of the day. I knew I was coming to do it now. So, uh, score view. Janelle. Who was the other person? Um, Yeah, we needed one, and so um, is not S E T H U, and I'm gonna assume that's the same person. They just decided to make their name shorter. They needed one, and I thought there was somebody else. Kinsman. Not in yet. Okay. Grant extensions. I will say we are on the 8th. I'll make it the 13th just to... So you guys, Janelle, you should be good. Um, I you have until um, my next Monday for the two chap first two chapters. Um, chapter three is due that day too, so that should give you enough time for all of those. Um, anybody else need anything? Any questions? No. All right, uh, just a reminder, just because I like to do this. Um, well, I don't like to do it, but I feel it's important. Um, test one is due on the 19th, which is not, uh, we are here. So 10 days from now, it's open. It's been open since the beginning of class. Um, it's on chapters two, three, and four. So you have covered everything that needs to be done. I won't give you an extension on the tests. Um, so make sure you get that in by the 19th. Um, that's at like midnight. So, um, and then I will put in everybody's grades for that point because we should be at the midpoint around then. Uh, so I need to start putting people's grades in. Um, so if you're missing stuff on uh, notes, just put them in. Let me send me an email. Say, oh, I did this. Um, uh, you know, I'm not worrying about it being late because I haven't even put it in the grades form yet. Um, same thing for the homework. I will, if you need an extension, let me know uh, for those chapters. Um, that way you can get them done. Um, so yeah, so make sure you're working on the 
the homework. So chapter four homework is due next Wednesday. Chapter three is due next Monday. Um, and the test is due the Sunday after that. So you have, should be able to work on all those pieces. Uh, and then we're still working on new stuff. Um, people ask, I know, I, I think in somebody asked, you know, I think I still have Saturday listed as dates or Thursday listed as dates for when things are due. Uh, just because there's so many of them, I don't like here, if you look at this, it probably says uh, that they're due the Thursday before school, uh, before the class. Yeah, right here. Um, this is from my regular, when I teach it on Saturdays, and I haven't taught on Saturdays for a while, they keep moving me around on days, uh, but there's so many of them, like, I just don't bother updating them. It's, I gotta take all that stuff out. It's just, and it's a pain, it's more of a pain uh, to delete it. Well, it probably isn't, but um, I should delete it. I'm just being lazy. Um, so, because I never know if these classes are going to run. They don't usually let me know until like a couple days before because especially the summer ones, I had eight for a while and like for the longest time. And then all of a sudden, boom, I had, you know, um, uh, users, like all of a sudden I had eight and then all of a sudden I had 20. <laughs> so, or 19 because it was me. Um, so like it just fills up instantly. And uh, then I'm like, oh, I have class. So I don't necessarily know if I'm going to be teaching that. And, um, but that's no excuse. I should just delete those things because video notes doesn't work anymore. And um, we're not doing them on Saturdays. We're doing them on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So the, the calendar is the way to, thing to go by because the dates in here, like I said, I haven't changed this stuff in 10 years just because I just keep copying it over because like the due dates that come up, like if you look at the... Um, post lecture notes if you click on one and I think it can you see the due dates um, no but I think like if you look in the grade book like the due dates say like 2004 14 or something like that you know or 2015 so yeah just ignore that stuff <laughs> um, uh, the the calendar is the thing to look through um, and I, cause I do make sure I update that before every, uh, class. To, so I change all the numbers. I change all the, where things are. So, um, I make sure that things are right. So, um, we have classes, um, next week, you know, the third, you know, the Thursday, Tuesday, and Thursday, the week after, and then, you know, we only have the 28th, um, in that week. So it's of vacation. So, um, and then we have all of this week off. So just make sure that you're aware of where we are and things. Um, I just like to make sure I, I post that out. Everybody good with that stuff? I'm gonna stop sharing. Oops, that's not the one I wanted. Stop sharing. Okay. So. Um, if everybody is good, uh, I will let you guys get out of here, um, cause that way you can have a night and have some dinner and all that good stuff. Um, I probably have to do some grocery shopping. Uh, have a great week. I will see you guys, some of you on Tuesday, some of you only come on Thursdays. Um, remember the, let me just share one more thing before I, uh, share application. One more thing. Um. So in the class meetings, remember the recordings are right here under recordings. And so they're going in there. The next one will be in there as soon as I stop this. So it will be there for you. Um, and I'm going to stop recording now. So it'll probably be there in like 15 minutes.